Mm -hmm. It never works. Mm -hmm. Seven five two seven. Right here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, she says. <laughs> okay, our agenda is a little different tonight uh, because we have a phone line open so that people have any questions concerning. Uh, the budget or any of the warrant articles, they can call in and ask us, and we'll try to give you an answer on it. Hopefully we can. Uh, what we have done, though, is we'll go along with our agenda, but even though we're talking about something else, please call, and we'll just stop and take the phone call. But in the past, we've kind of sat here and twiddled our thumbs waiting for phone calls and, uh, and then done the agenda at the end, so it didn't make sense to just sit and do nothing. We're a pretty active group, so get right to it. <laughs> All right, so uh, the number to call is 529-7527. If you have any questions concerning the voting tomorrow, the, the voting is taking place regardless of the storm. We'll get that out of the way right away. Uh, so at, at the middle school from 7 a.m. until 7 p.m., and that's voting for the warrants for... Uh, the town of Ware, Ware School District, and John Stark School District as well. So give us a call if you have a question. Uh, and Are you going to take some from the floor if you have any? Pardon me? Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. Actually, uh, also, if uh, there's somebody here who has a question about it, who, uh, our vast audience. Feel free, Frank. Come on down. <laughs> come on down. <laughs> uh, Frank Campana. I, I actually have uh, a couple of three, but I'll, I'll certainly do one at a time and then sit down. Um, it, uh, I'm I'm curious to know uh, as I read the um, uh, the mailer. Um, if, if the board re remembers um, when uh, there's Article 6, which is for the officer, Article 10, which is, and questions the same for all three, Article 10, re road reconstruction, uh, Article 11 for the part-time uh, highway person. Um, when when uh, you had your budget hearing, um, those those articles are uh, two of those articles are for personnel. And when you had your budget hearing, the um, uh, it it was written in a fashion that it uh, only was for the dollar amount was only for you know uh, I think uh, six months for the officer or six months for the part time uh, part time highway or. Um, well, let, let me read the let me read Article Six. Um, uh, Forty-one hundred dollars, uh, forty-one thousand dollars represents the wages and benefits for six months. Um, that that's the way it was written uh, at the budget hearing. Uh, that's the way that it is in here on the um, for the ballot. And I had asked that night that. Um, the board consider, and I use the word consider to try to be um, positive about it, uh, if you would include the total amount for 12 months, the total dollar amount for 12 months. Uh, th the same was for the uh, highway department person. Uh, and then you did not do that. It, you did not. You, you did I, not. I have do Article it. Six in front of me here in the mailer, and it, correct. It spells that out. Correct. Uh, and the re the reason it spells it out is because I and I'm not looking for any credit by any means. I'm, I'll get to my point in a second. 
the reason that those, those total dollar amounts for full 12 months appear is through an amendment. Okay? So it took somebody from the public to make an amendment to show and to tell people what the full cost of EM. You're going to end up hiring these people for a year if they get voted in. Uh, the selectmen chose not to put that in, so I, I offered an amendment, and fortunately, uh, the selectmen uh, approved a couple of the amendments. I think there were, I think my notes there was one uh, one that you uh, actually I think I seconded did, that for you. you Okay, that, that's even better. <laughs> um, uh, it was, uh, well, it actually, was an, it was another one. Was it? So my, my question is, uh, let me see how I have it here. You know, I, I hear this word transparency thrown out quite a bit, uh, not only from the board, but from people in the public, but more so from the board. So I, I wonder uh, why, when it came to the final draft for the mailer, uh, well, not for the mailer, but for the um, uh, for the deliberative session, why the ch selectmen chose not to put in the full dollar amount for 12 years, uh, for 12 months. Again, it had to be done through an amendment. Uh, you would have benefited because it would have saved less. It would have saved time to begin with. You wouldn't have had to look at me and listen to me which is a big plus, I wouldn't have had to go through that effort, okay, or maybe even somebody else. But again, you know, to be transparent, um, you know, why, why didn't the selectmen do that on their own for Article 6, which is the officer, uh, and Article 11, which is the part-time highway person? And I'll further it with one other unrelated, not pay-wise, but Article 10 is the re road reconstruction money. And that, uh, that had a tax impact of 23 cents. But as I stated when I made the amendment, uh, that 23 cents did not relate to any, either of the two numbers that were in the article. This is Article 10. Mm -hmm. um, so I amended it to you know, to include the couple hundred thousand dollars, which did, in fact, relate to the 23 cents. The selectmen chose not to do that also. So I, I guess I'm wondering why, the, uh, I, I'll, use, I'll use a phrase that comes from, the that comes from a, uh, a member sitting in front of me. It sounds like a gotcha when you don't include, you know, what the upfront numbers are. So. What, can you tell me why the selectmen? Again, it's kind of unrelated for tonight. But can, is there, uh, I, I'd actually, well, you're the chairman, so you're going to speak to it. But is there any good reason why those numbers weren't included by the selectmen? No, I mean, we're. Okay. Yeah. I think any time that we have a warrant article, we run it by DRA, we run it by our attorney, uh, we accept it. It's okay, according to the standards set by them, uh, and it, the warrant article tells what the person or the town is being taxed on for that given year. I have no problem with the amendment that you made, and you know it's something we certainly could keep in mind in the future. But at this point, uh, you know, I really don't have an explanation. <coughs> for you. Okay. We. Drafted the articles. We ran them through the Department of Revenue Administration. We ran them through our attorney. They're the standard way of say of of. Uh, and I understand your point of view. And whoever is sitting here next year, whether it's me or somebody else, or the board as a whole, will have to make a decision as to whether or not they want to move ahead with your suggestion and have it up front in there to begin with, or whether they want to wait for an amendment. Uh, okay. The one on the highway reconstruction, we've gone around on that a lot of times and uh, over the years, and we've always had our attorney say, or DRA say, uh, DRA. DRA say that the way we, we've done it without that third number in there is the appropriate way of doing it. Uh, okay. Now, because of the amendment at the deliberative session, we did add the amount that you want, which still has to be an estimated Which amount. actually you revised. 
<laughs> yeah. you yourself, which was fine. I mean, you know, anything for an accurate number or yeah. closer and, to accurate. And it is going to be an estimate yeah. because there's always some variation in the actual amount of money we get from the state. It's usually not a lot, but there is a variation. Uh, sometimes it goes up a little, sometimes it goes down a little. So we can't give a definite difference. This is what you're appropriating. This is what the state's giving. This is the exact number that will be taxed on. It, it, it's it's going to be an estimate. Right. And 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 that that was specific in my amendment. You know, the estimated balance in 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 the case of article in case of article ten. So and and I understand. I think probably any reasonable person will understand that uh, you know there are estimates. Yeah. You know, if you hire somebody, what do you hire somebody? You, you give them a family plan. You, you're going to hire somebody with a, uh, you know, with a uh, single plan or a two-family plan. You know, again, I think any reasonable person can understand that. But I think any reasonable person would like to know what the full freight is going to be. What's it going to cost me? Can I just, may I add something? Yeah. I think, Frank, I, 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 I do remember you asking that question, but at the same time, I know we also talked about, which we didn't do because it's already in the wording of the article, is to tell them how much the year costs because you did throw that out there. And I think our answer to that was we could explain it in the mailer for the full year cost, which right. we don't have to because you put it there. But I'm saying that I think that was the discussion. It okay. wasn't that we were avoiding it. It was like we were going to put it as in the mail. Right. And, and that recall, I'm glad you said that because yep. I, I believe that, that that what you're saying, I believe mm -hmm. that that was the case. Correct. But I, I think I furthered that. I said, you, you know, for me, that's not good enough. Okay. It really should be in the article because we know everybody's going to read the, everybody that comes to vote is going to read the article. Okay, they may not read the mail. Uh, I mean, you presume that they do, mm -hmm. all right? But, you know, don't don't leave any room for error. Mm -hmm. It's also in the so, town report. Yeah. Okay, that, that's all I have for now, unless, unless you want me to ask another one. Can you stand it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, can, can you stand me asking? Uh, just a reminder that if there's somebody out there in TV land that wants to ask a question, please call 529-7527. And then uh, my, my second question, uh, it, um, the, the proposed, bud that you, proposed budget that's uh, on the warrant uh, is uh, a 6% uh, increase. I mean, that, that's no secret. That, been thrown that's been discussed and been well known so it's a six percent increase uh, I, I would like to hear from actually uh, don't be offended Tom uh, I would actually like to hear from each selectman um, their uh, their reason how they justified a six percent increase I, I don't need to give the dollar amount but, uh, again just as a reminder you know this town is uh, you know, done okay with, uh, you know, anywhere from one, two, three. I, I don't remember. I didn't go back too far to see a 4%, but, uh, you know, so, you know, this year it's actually doubled the highest of what has been. So I, I would like to hear if, if, they choose to, if they choose to respond. And I, I can sit down. Okay. I'll be quiet for a minute then. You may be the only one speaking to it. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Go ahead. Finance Committee, Frank, I explained this, and you know because you're here every year when we set the tax rate. And we don't go to the department heads and say, please don't ask for any more than this. And I know that you disagree with that, but we say present your needs. And then we go through a process uh, of discussing the budgets. Sometimes we 
change things, usually some things, and uh, other times it goes ahead the way the department heads uh, present it. And I don't feel that the department heads had their budgets in any way. I think they actually ask for what they need, and then we follow through with that. Now, the reason I talk about the tax rate is because uh, we always look at what we have available to lower taxes in the general fund, the undesignated fund balance. And usually we take a pretty sizable amount of that to do it. So that 6% doesn't come out to a 6% increase once the tax rate's set. You know, like last year, if you can recall the, the sheet that we had, the figures we got from the state, uh, if we had done nothing with the raw figures, we would have had a 7% increase in 2017. We ended up with a 1% because we took what we felt we could do and still have plenty of money for cash flow out of that fund to offset the tax rate. Now, there may be different theories on whether that should work that way or not, but in fact, we did get just a 1% increase when in fact it could have been 7% if we'd done nothing else. Uh, we also have other revenues that come in. So when that, uh, and I don't really say other, but we always estimate our revenues low. I know you read the monitor and understand what happened over in Pembroke when they, they didn't, uh, they overestimated their revenues and ended up with a big shortfall in the school district over there, which caused a lot of uh, grief. We don't do that. We have very conservative estimates about our uh, revenues from all the sources, a lot of them out of, through the town clerk's office. Uh, and then in August uh, or early September, uh, we revise those depending on what's come in so far. And then they can be revised again right up until the time we set the tax rate. So that, that's, I'm saying all that because that raw figure of six point something percent doesn't calculate out that way because it's based on revenue estimates that are conservative to begin with, and it doesn't take into account money we can apply for the tax rate in October when we set the rate. So, you know, I understand what you're saying, but uh, it, it's not going to come out to that number when all is said and done, in my opinion. Maybe, maybe I'll be eating crow next October, but uh, I don't think so. Um, uh, that's that's my way of looking at it. I, I don't think that there was anything that was in there that was above and beyond what we need. Um, it's it's just like I guess what I'm saying. It's more complex than ju and you more than anybody know this because you are very observant of all of our meetings and our processes. Um, there's, there's just a lot of other facets to it before you end up with an actual tax rate. Uh, and ours, by the way, is, and I, and I repeat this because it, it's true, it, it, we have the lowest of all towns in the area. The closest one is about a dollar more. Dunbarton a little more than that, uh, a little less than that, but we'll take New Boston, that's easy to figure because Take a dollar more, that $250,000 house is going to be $250 more on the tax bill. So that's a significant difference where taxes for a $250,000 house compared to our neighbor in New Boston. And it's very close in Nunbarton, too. And then it goes after that six, seven, eight, ten dollars. Come on, I can, down. I can answer, but I won't. I mean, I guess I'll wait and see what you. I, I, I just I just want to make note and and I'll look to you to correct me if I'm wrong but that that six percent will all and I understand what you're saying it won't come out to that you all use your words it's a raw number all right because you can you at the end of the year you can adjust uh, you know return to reduce taxes and ho hopefully I'll jump the gun uh, I don't want to see the end of the year but uh, hopefully you'll make an adjustment to reduce the overall tax rate not just the town portion. 
No, but that that aside. But that six percent, if you get the proposed budget, that six percent will always be in that budget. The the only factor that makes it not the six percent is as you stated, what you can return to reduce taxes at the end of the year. If you have nothing that you can return to reduce taxes, which probably won't happen. Uh, I mean, I think I remember the, this this year was two and a quarter, 225. Well, I think it was last year, or certainly the I think last year was like 75,000 that you returned. Okay, so that's that's what makes th that six percent is the is the percentage that's going to fluctuate the, uh, by what's determined what you return to reduce the taxes for the town. So that's all. Yeah. So I think that six percent is always in the budget. Yeah, I understand what you mean. I have another thought, but Jen has some things that she wants to say. Well, I mean, I know that part of it is like a fifty thousand dollar increase in the fire department due to the increase in hours for the um, EMTs for more coverage. It's a fifteen hour day. If I'm correct on that. Yeah. That's I, I'm not looking for specifics. I just wanted to oh, know. Well I just I thought that's what you wanted. To no, know I just wanted to know. I just wanted to know how the, the selectmen justified their oh. percentage. Now, if they want to tell me, well, okay, you give well, those examples. Okay, well, that's public safety, and and it okay. was a needed okay. uh, service. So. Yeah, the other part of that is that uh, people approve uh, warrant articles the previous year, and those become oftentimes become part of the uh, operating budget the coming year. Right. For example, and I'm not saying this negatively, we, we agreed to a three-year collective bargaining agreement with the police department, and so that's going to reflect on each of the budgets over those three years with, mm -hmm. with an increase. And I second Jan right there. I mean, I think it's fantastic that we're able to expand that coverage to uh, 15 hours a day for the EMT services. And um, so that certainly, to me, adds justification uh, for the increase. But I do understand what you mean about it being there, but uh, I'm just saying, as I did before, it won't necessarily come out that way in a tax rate, but you're right, the figures are dollars and cents. Guys, anything? Yeah, I'm digging for information here. You know, to, to expand on what on what Selectman Snyder said is, and and Selectman Quo, um, we did have increases across the board from the CBA and the um, the fire department um, extending the extend the coverage. Um, the retirement with the PD went up as as they as their salaries go up. So just quick math right there, it's it's over a hundred thousand dollars just in those four items. Right. Um, so you put that on six, you know, uh, five five eight budget it's gonna you know the percentage is gonna go up now six point six percent does seem steep you're right um, but again public a public safety and B some of the stuff is the town voted in you know also also too was um, incorrect if I'm wrong could be wrong I've been would be wrong before the debt services are on there so um, yeah the, actually another thing the health insurance um, because of um, New employees in the highway department before they were not in the family plan. This year they are in the family plan. So I mean, it, it, these are all justifiable. I mean, there's really nothing you can do about that. And on top of that, add to that, we had employees that we didn't hire for a full year, and now we've got to flip the bill for the full year. Right. The Twelve months they came in about way through. Yeah. So mm -hmm. now that salary, the salaries and benefits are increased. But that money's always been budgeted. Yeah, some of it, money. But, well, some of it is after last year because we had to scrape. We didn't have the full 12 months last year because of the cut at the deliberative session last year. Mm -hmm. So we had to work with it, and we forestalled hiring people to fill these positions. Yeah, that, that's actually true of any, because when we, let's say, a general employee uh, raise, uh, if it passes, and it's, I think last year it was 3%. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, and that 3% was a raise for the remainder of the year from April 1st through the end of the year. So when you push that into the following year's budget, you've got an extra 13 weeks there. Uh, 
so it shows as an as an increase in the budget. Donna, did you have a question? Mm -hmm. uh, are we all set for now, Frank? Yes, thank you. Brought up um, Article Six. Um, one of my questions. I've been on this board before, and to my knowledge, it's always been like that. I'd like to see the board, whoever is coming forth, do one or the other, not both, because it could be very confusing with two numbers there in the article. Um, the one additional officer, I don't know who could clarify this. There's four of you, and I'd like to hear from all one of you other than Tom, because he's the chairman, and I think he, the messenger gets shot a lot for being the chair mm -hmm. and everybody else. Mm -hmm. I want to know if the police chief's contract states that he does not patrol. This police chief, I understand he is part-time, he probably has paperwork, but not once have I seen him out on the road patrolling, helping his men out. So if he wants one officer, he could be that other officer and, pay, and save our taxes to help the men out. Okay, uh, that's my feeling. Um, I've, I've heard Les Knox. I don't know if anybody knows Les Knox. He always said, don't ask your people to do something that you won't do. And I, that's a standard thing. I'd like to see the chief out on the road, other than in his blue private car that he takes home every day, and do some patrolling with his men to stand up with them and back them. And I'd like to know if this is in his contract. <laughs> That's my main thought. If he can't patrol, and that's it's not in the contract. It's not, it's so then it's why not, don't I see him the out there? And he shouldn't be patrolling. I agree with you. you know, he needs to be out there, be seen, be seen yeah. and heard. Even if it's not patrol, I, he's we, getting we good seen. money. Yeah. I know he's part time, but I understand he has somebody under him that might not be able to patrol because of health reasons or whatever. He could do a lot of the backup paperwork. Um, and another thing I'd like to see is he's asking for one officer. Now, the budget, I'd like to, I don't have it in front of me. Even though he's asking for one in the article, is he got two for the budget? Why isn't there one on the budget and not two? Well, right now he's in the process. Really one. But well, if he's only asking for one, correct. So we make in the budget, I thought there was he was asking for two in the budget to cover. Yeah. Initially, I don't initially have it with initially me. He was initially, he was. oh, initially he was, but not as of it's pr printed today. Because I've heard there's like two hundred thousand left over and three hundred thousand. I want yeah, that, the word that's, that's been tossed around. I'd like to answer that. Uh, because I won't shoot you, promise, Mister. Okay, <laughs> just stand in line. Uh, but last year, it really goes back to last year, 2017, when we worked with the finance committee. To prior to the deliberative session, the finance committee was ready to approve our proposed budget, right. and we uh, did certain things like. Uh, we knew we had vacancies in the department, the police department, and it was going to be, even best case scenario, was going to be a good uh, three to six months before we could fill them. So we agreed to take uh, the salaries for that amount of time for those two officers that we were down out, knowing that when we went back this year, that would be back in there, so we, because it was for full staff. Mm -hmm. So uh, it looked like a big increase because we didn't have that money in there last year for I think it was six months yeah. uh, of pay for two officers because we knew we wouldn't be able to hire them and so we didn't put in the budget. 
Okay. This year, the intention is during the course of this year to get up to full force. Now we've already gotten one. Right. Hope to get the other one, so we'll be to full force without that other article. And so there's money in there for the for the department for full force uh, through the the year. Okay, so. It looks like a bigger <laughs> increase than what it is because it makes up what we took out for the beginning of last year uh, as kind of a deal with the Finance Committee. Uh, that was added back in. Uh, and then there's also increases because of the contract and so forth. So it comes out looking like a big increase. Uh, if we get to full force, that money will be spent, or at least a good share of it will be. If it isn't, then we'll have it to give back at the end of the year, just like we did this year. We had $107,000 we gave back. And why? Because there are positions that couldn't be filled. The highway didn't fill one until December. But I'm still com kind of confused, Tom, as far as if he's asking for one, mm -hmm. the budget is only for one? For, for that article. For that, that article, particular article. If that article okay. doesn't pass, that's not part of the budget. Well, I'm, I'm listening to everybody that stands up here in the okay. past that there's money in the budget for two and yet he's only asking for one. The money in the budget for two are positions that have already been approved by the voters. Last year? Mm -hmm. Forever. Yeah. We just haven't been able to fill them. We've been, we've had a, a, a 12 member yeah. police people. department, chief right. and 11 officers, including the, the lieutenant and sergeants and so forth, on the books but we haven't been able to fill the positions. So the two that you're talking about there is, as of the time for earlier discussions until a, lot, a week ago, there were two unfilled positions, no, which no. would just bring us up to the level that had long ago been approved. 2006 it was approved, when, uh, the year that uh, Chief Began right. stood up and talked, and the year after he was elected. And there was an, an incident over on Woodbury Road where a lady's husband passed yes. away um, because there was no police available to contact fire and so forth. So it was a very emotional meeting, and in the, in the, that year, two additional officers were approved. That brought it up to 11 officers plus the chief. That's where it's been ever since. So that, that's where we're at right now. So the two that it's being spoken of are already approved 2006. We just haven't been able to get the positions filled. And as of now, it's one position. I, but I am, filled. you know, I'm, yep. I'm kind of concerned because I know it's bottom line, not line for line, but I want to make sure that if he doesn't hire these people, that money comes back. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. It's not mm -hmm. right. I don't want to see his budget over and he's going to take it out of that line. Yeah. And that's my opinion. He has one officer to hire under his budget. This other one here, I don't think he can use it unless he can't use that money anyway. Unless it's just for salaries. It's because it's just for that position. If he doesn't fill that position, that money doesn't get used. Because it's a warrant article, right? It's for that purpose. Okay. Yeah, that's a good point, I think. Okay. In in the budget, I'm gonna watch it. Certain items in the budget are encumbered. So right. that's, and that's one of them. You know, yeah. Contracts or salaries, that's an encumbered expense. Right. So you can't take that money for salary and go use it to buy something. It's I still stand by. Money. We need to see a uh, police chief out there on the Thank road. Mm -hmm. Agree. Anyone else? Um, Think about it if you want to speak up, or we're still waiting for calls, even though we were going to <laughs> shut them off at 7.30. We haven't gotten any yet, so we'll, we'll keep the line open for telephone calls. Can we just make a, um, can I just make a point out the mailer was wrong? Yes, yeah, sure, that's right. Um, I just want everyone to know that in the mailer, when you look at the town ballot part, um, if you go down and look at, there is a mistake, and the mistake being the trustee of the trust funds. Um, the trustee of the trust funds is a three-year term, and it's not going, Connie St. Clair is actually on the ballot for a cemetery trustee for a one-year period. And Sarah Dinwoody is the one that you will see on the ballot 
for the trustees of the trust funds for a three-year term. So I just want, for clarification, if you get to the ballot and you've studied names, um, Connie St. Clair is a one-year for the cemetery trustee, and Sarah Dinwoody is a three-year for the trustee of trust funds. Okay. Both of them are running unopposed, but there was an error made in the mailer. So and I apologize. Bill Tiffany is not running. He's already no, Bill list. Tiffany okay. is running. What happened is Janet Brown resigned, and there's a one year. She would have had one more year. So um, Connie St. Clair is running for that one year okay. unexpired term. Bill Tiffany is running for the three year uh -huh. term. And then again, Sarah Dinwoody is running for the Trustees of Trust Fund for three years. Sarah, I mean, Sarah's name got avoided. All together and in the mail. But it is correct on the ballot. It's correct on the ballot. We don't have anybody here for pop to pop ahead items, I don't think. Bob, do you have anything specific? Uh, so let's while we're waiting for all those phone calls to pour in, yeah. we'll uh, look at the minutes from last week, March fifth. If you got them, I mean, I know Jan got them, you guys. I didn't get mine myself. Okay, well, what do you want to wait till next week? Yeah. Yeah. Good. All right. So I need to take we're going to postpone the approval of the minutes. Uh, Excuse me. Can, can I take a phone call for a second? The draft minutes are on the website, so somebody wants to see them. Manifest. Uh, I move the order of the treasurer to sign the payroll and accounts payable uh, checks dated March 15th, 2018, as included in the following payroll manifest $63,346.91, accounts payable $70,064.21, and a, an accounts payable to John Stark school district for $250,000. So the total is $383,411.12. Is there a second? Second. Any questions or discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Did you take notes? Okay, <laughs> second. Come on. Okay, most report. Actually, I don't have much. I apologize for taking the phone. Um, on the Surf Pro is going to be here to look at the, uh, I say roofs, because it'll be all the roofs upstairs the in the other offices that had leaks. Um, they're going to be here from 10 to 11 tomorrow. Um, and the only other thing I wanted to mention was the election day. You already mentioned, Tom, is still on from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., regardless of the weather. Um, the rest of them have dates to them. Next week, we're going to talk about the custodian position again, just to remind you guys. Next week, you're also going to have, um, Tom was part of this, there's a hazmat mitigation plan that needs to be adopted um, from Southern New Hampshire Planning. We're supposed to be getting hard copies so that we can have a public hearing to adopt it. Mm -hmm. um, there was some money, if you remember, there was some offsetting grant money, correct? Yes. That um, has to be done before April or we lose out, so we're going to... Um, I'm trying to get two hard copies because the book is fairly thick and I'm not going to, I don't have the ability to print the maps or anything else that's in it. So we've asked for them, but it won't be tomorrow that I get them, I'm sure. So, but next week we'll have a brief public hearing for the hazard mitigation plan. Anything else? Nope. Any questions? About We're sort of all blended together here with questions and public comments. Does anybody else have a question or a comment concerning uh, things this evening? If so, Frank? Uh, again, I'm, I'm still a little confused on this recent change with the default budget. Um, that 
that's happened. Uh, but, and correct me, again, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, it sounds like um, the board actually put in about, put back in for the default budget about $60,000, a little bit less. And one of those items, and I, I, I'm, picking, I'm picking the largest one to make it easy for me, I guess, hopefully for you folks, uh, the insurances. Uh, I, I wasn't able to go to candidates night uh, because of the weather. I, mean, I guess I could have. But in any event, it would have been one of my questions that night. Um, the, under the insurances, and I'm looking at a budget worksheet um, of a couple of months ago, actually, but there isn't much that's changed. Uh, the the uh, general liability line for the insurance uh, is a little over $47,000 less this year than it was last year. Um, and I noticed, uh, I did add, I did request, and uh, I received a copy of the new default budget, the new budget including the changes in the default budget. Uh, that amount, uh, says the column is uh, 2018 new default budget. Uh, it looks like that amount of $47,000 was actually added in, back into the board, uh, back into uh, the amount by the board. And uh, I'm wondering why that was done. And I'm, at, I'm wondering why specifically it was done, because it's a contract. And it's not a contract. Well, it's got a double asterisk between it. Every, every report I have has a double asterisk beside it. But so there's, no real, there's no signed contract with the insurance company. Then why, well... I guess in a sense... Well, let, let, me, let me just okay. ask this. Sure. I, I look up above, uh, lawn, lawn mowing contract. Mm -hmm. Is that a signed contract? Yes. yes. It has a double asterisk? Yes. Okay. Lawn care cemetery, double asterisk. General liability, double asterisk. So you're sending me a mixed message here, I guess. I mean, we, we don't sign any type of contract with uh, Primex? We don't, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, we have a, a agreement through our personnel policy, through uh, police union and so forth with uh, in some individual employment contracts for providing insurance. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm getting off track there because I'm, I'm on health insurance. Excuse me. Let me back off. Because that's this is property gonna, liability. Yeah, what I was going to say is not applicable to what you're talking you about. Look, you want to you no, no, borrow that? I know exactly what you mean. Okay. okay. I didn't know if you wanted for a reference. So, uh, you're right, we don't. We, we purchase the insurance the same as you would. You purchase it, and if you don't pay, you don't have your insurance. So, you know, uh, it's a li li liability insurance. We also have a line there, which is separate for our workman's comp and so forth. Workman's comp went up some, I believe, and the right. liability went down. Right, it did do uh, that. And typically, because those are necessities, uh, we carry them over and uh, into the default budget. Now, I understand what you're saying, and I understand uh, your disagreement with it, but we have an obligation as a board to make sure that we have enough money to run the town. And so when we create the default budget, we can bring and legally bring anything over with the exact same numbers they had the la last year. Actually, on finance committee meeting, the same mem member who uh, filed suit against us for the contracts uh, stated very clearly at, that we should have been bringing that amount over because that's the way the default budget's supposed to work. Yeah, I was the one to ask that question on, on January 3rd because we, as the board, were presenting our budget to the Finance Committee and there was questions about changes down the line and that was one of the questions I had because of the large amount. And I asked that um, individual, I says, I says using that that process, we should put that that insurance line from the 373 back to the 420. I was told yes. And because it's based on a rate increase, 
e decrease or increase. Mm -hmm. Right. It's based on your performance. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think to be compliant with this, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, Chairman, but I think to be compliant with the suit, mm -hmm. we did everything that, that was that was asked of us in the suit, and to follow that same logic, we did it across the default budget, okay. through and what, through. Well, I, I have to presume that I believe what you're saying because I was, you know, I have no way of proving what, mm -hmm. you know, what was said and what was done. Yeah, it, I, I, I so, went back and looked it up because I was questioning. I, th I was like, I thought I asked that question. I actually did find it. So it was on. It's on the YouTube video of the finance mm -hmm. committee. Okay. About the uh, hour and hour and eight minute mark, as a matter of fact. Yeah. Okay. Well, but there are other things in there too that we changed I, in order to. to right. I, I just picked that one because that's that seems to be the largest, the largest dollar. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I figured it, it would be the easiest. Mm -hmm. So I, again, just clarify to me that is not a signed contract. Then. We 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 agree to buy insurance. When we signed up with them, we buy insurance for the next five years for them. But there's not five years at four hundred thousand dollars it's okay. based on your performance okay. so I'm, if you I'm have like a lot of workers comp claims or if you have a lot of unemployment claims and you're really good on your which you know we were down and went way up from our yep. previous experience yep. Yep. and now we're on the downhill on that experience so every year it's that. based on a five-year sliding window so you cycled out last year in a, a high year so then now you're on the next five and it's going to move this way but we keep we said we'd buy insurance for them for five years and the window slides right you know yeah, based on our performance yeah, i recall it okay two, so. two last things on that uh one is truly a comment then the board is comfortable enough with uh taxing the taxpayers for a forty seven thousand dollars to the tune of forty seven thousand dollars that you're not going to spend that's that's the first thing. You, apparently, you're comfortable enough doing that. Uh, and and um, second thing. <laughs> oh, so, I better look at my note. I guess. Uh, secondly, um, does the board have any idea of of all that of that roughly sixty thousand dollars that you put back into the default budget? Um, do you have any idea if it's going to, where it's going to be spent? And I'll just throw this out there. Is it going to be spent to, um, which I know there were two issues, I think, in your appeal, I mean, into you, uh, into this suit. I is it going to go to uh, fund two positions? Not two positions. This whole thing had more contracts than those. I know those two positions are getting all of the focus here. The, the town administrator's contract, the police contract. They're getting all of the attention here. But the supposition that was made in that suit was that there are no contracts that we can sign during the year and bring those funds into the default budget. Well, we disagree with that, and that's why it's being appealed. Uh, and our attorney disagreed with us and has been for years. Uh, let me back up a little bit again, go back to 2006 when we hired Fred Ventresco as a town administrator. Yes. We hired him in the middle of the year. Okay, I, I don't know whether it was... June 2006. June right. 2006, okay. Signed the contract with him. The next year his contract was in the default budget. Nobody mentioned anything about it and since then all of these we have the trash hauling contract, uh, the uh, recyclable hauling contracts, we have lawn care contracts, we have an assessing contract, we have a, a uh, uh, auditor's contract. Uh, prosecutor. 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 Um, these are all things that we have for years signed the contracts in the default budget because they're, they have terminated during the middle of the year. We had to sign contracts in order for them to continue. And uh, this year, that uh, was uh, a suit brought against the town. Uh, and our attorney disagrees with the findings. We disagreed with the findings because we have been including that for ever in the, uh, in the default budget. Uh, we'll have to see where that goes. Okay. 
but to answer your question about uh, where the money's going to go, one of the things that the court was saying is, well, yes, you have the right to, to, to sign the contracts. You just have to have the right to put the money into the default budget. And go figure. If we could sign all of these contracts, which we did, well, we which we makes have. it a legal obligation of the town right, a legal and by obligation. being signed. So, you know, the we have a legal obligation to pay those contracts, and they'll be paid out of whatever budget, budget. hopefully the proposed budget, and then we don't even have this issue. But if it's a default budget, we have to pay them out of that. Okay. So uh, it's not two contracts; it's all of these that are listed uh, that are part of this issue of signing any contract and uh, I'll tell you that holds it's going to be very difficult to you know our assessors have to have an assessment for April 1st for example and that's what your base your tax rate on the property values as of April 1st well to uh, line up every contract so that it matches the calendar year and is still in force when it's needed, it's going to be very difficult. Well, I, I think the board should probably work towards that and, and uh, you know, you use the voting date as a, a start, you, you know, start of contracts so that somebody like me, just like you want me to vote for a, high, you want me to vote for a highway truck, you want me to vote for an officer, you, you want me to vote for uh, a backhoe. You know, when, when do I get that say on that commitment? I get it tomorrow, don't I? As, as well as everybody else, all right? This here, when, when you, it, it almost sounds like maybe you'd like to move towards contracts to the middle of the year so you can obligate me without me having to say so. Yeah, or, there, or there and again, I say me. You know, there isn't any game else. playing here. It's, it's when I, they become due. I mean, well, I, I, I'm not saying this is, I, I, I did not say that, and I'm not indicating that. I'm saying, you know, let's, it, you know, it, if, if you want to be transparent, all right, and you don't want to be a gotcha, okay, then let the, let the voters have a say on a day like tomorrow and not out of sync. So I mean, I, I, mean, I understand you're right, Frank, just to clarify in my mind, that every contract we get should be brought forth and it should be on the ballot and be voted on by, by the people. Is, is that what you're, um, you're well, saying? Or so, well, I, 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 can't, I can't say yes because... Um, you, you, you're, you're going to discuss a, a contract probably with a, uh, a cleaner. Oh, we right? get, uh, for instance, so, we get contracts for the so, fire and the police dispatch. I mean, you, so, should we put those on the ballot? I mean, it, it well, seems well, like that's what you're saying, so I mean, I want to make sure it's clear. Well, well they, they are actually on the ballot. Well, they are on the budget, yeah. but I mean, yeah. we sign the contract with them and, and they're well, in I, so I we would have think to have dispatch for the fire, we have to have dispatch for the police. I, I would think it would be more of a personnel contract. And I would liken it to it, it's it's not quite the same, uh, but w you know we signed con and I said it before, and you probably heard it from other people. We we sign contracts with the teachers yearly, all right, or you know it might be for three years, but we sign it this year. You know we have a voting on it. Again, it's probably an issue of collective bargaining that there's an RSA that says it has to be done that way. The police contract is the same thing. Collective bargaining probably has to be that way. So it is done with personnel. And maybe it's done under a set, you know, a separate uh, RSA or a separate set of standards or yes. something like that. But uh, you know, to be consistent with personnel. So okay, so just just the personnel. And, and I don't want to sound hypocritical to, either. You're, you're with, just alluding to the personnel ones, then not to the ones for trash hauling or this other stuff. Though. Yeah, I mean if. You know, if it's you know, if you because can make a distinction, I, I don't mean you, but you know, if the, if the distinction could be made, well, hopefully know. this will be worked out. You know, okay. because how this appeal works, just like Jan said a couple of weeks ago here, we will have an answer, okay. and then we'll have to work within that framework. Right. You know, that's that's the way it is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, um, um, that's a, that's enough. For, <laughs> Thank you. We, we have a busy day tomorrow. Yes, <laughs> yes uh, we yeah. do. Oh, well, at least hours. So I'm going to be outside. Okay. Yeah. Gonna be outside. Tom, oh, oh. If I remember, okay. Thank you, Fred. Oh, thank you me. When we hired Fred, I don't know if anybody knew this, but if my mind 
comes back to me, your tax is paid to, for him to be moved here. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, so, and nobody said anything about that. So maybe if you add that to his contract, because it wasn't cheap to move him here, you can't, <laughs> you know, it's, it probably evens out pretty much. Actually, he had a $74,000 contract the first year yes. in 2006, 12 years ago. Yes, right. So, you know. He, and moving him was really expensive, and, and not one person said anything about his contract. Not one person. Um, well, well I, I think it just, if you allow yeah. me, I, I think many things have come to light. I mean, you grow, you know, people right. grow, the board selectmen, the, 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 average, the average person grows, you know, things become known. So mm -hmm. I think it's always a process of, uh, you know, finding out new things and mm -hmm. say, what if, you know. I mean, the adage is, if I knew, if I knew now what I, if Did I knew, then. I knew <laughs> then what I know now, you know, <laughs> <laughs> would be ahead of the game. But yeah, okay, I, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks, Frank. Um, okay, we're still public comment. Then at 8 o'clock, I'm going to close off the phone lines and uh, just uh, close out. Mommy, can I make you feel better? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we usually hear from you, Donna. <laughs> she came tonight, too. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but poor Beth is in there. Really she wants somebody to talk to. Phone and stand up there. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good if this is not announcement, why don't we move on? Did we, anybody on the board have other business or correspondence? We've got a piece of correspondence that was sent to you, Tom, before the door. I think it should be read. And you I'm, want to read all the words? I'm going to read all of it, and I'm going to preface it by saying there's some very um, vulgar. vulgar and crude language in this, and um, but I think it has to be read, and in fact, it was sent. Why don't you use just the first letter? <laughs> well, I think it should, I don't think we should edit it. In the, in, as everybody says, in the interest of transparency, so anybody that's listening, I apologize for the language, but that's not what we put in. Here it is, it has to do with the proposed budget lawsuit. It says, it starts out, what the hell is going on with this board? What are you doing to our deliberative session amendment on the operating budget? I hope Neil puts the shit to you. I usually don't say much because I've lost all faith in the board lately. I try to find good smarts, wisdom and transparency in what you do, but it's been slipping away fast. I can't even watch anymore because it just ticks me off. My example of the way a board of a selectman smarts and wisdom is this following scenario. Town DPW garage passes. Old garage torn down. Not wise. Great cold storage use. To answer that particular point, we had to tear it down to put the new building up. It was in the way. Town of Ware takes tax back property, old next gen garage, in parenthesis. We spend money to fix it up to temporarily house the DPW during construction. DPW garage finished, should be moving in shortly. Now we might keep the tax reclaimed property for storage. Well, best one I heard, yeah and I'm going to apologize for this language. Best one I heard, uh, or the best one I heard, was a fucking impound lot for the cops. Um, so here we are, money spent, tear down old DPW garage, spend money to fix up temporary garage, may keep it, and not get a sale out of it. So now our reason is it would be great storage for DPW or an impound yard. If there was any smarts on this board, a simple scenario like this would have played out 180 degrees differently and saved the town money in demo, rebuilding a property that is tax repossessed and the fiasco of temporarily housing a DPW, also selling the property to get our tax money back. See how you all look like you don't know how to earn the trust of the people. Get your act together. It was signed by Eldon Towns. Uh, in answer to the part about cold storage, yeah, we're responsible, and it was brought up to repurpose that building that we put money in, that, either for the highway department. They're still using it because they don't want to move all the equipment in the middle of winter. They will be moving it out in the spring. The other part is, is that we have property that has to be impounded, and we've been kicking this around from the police department. Um, if we don't find a secure place to put it, we're responsible for it. We're going to end up paying whoever... It belongs to when they come to get it, either when the court case clears or somebody comes to claim it as stolen property or lost property, 
if it's left outside or it's damaged because we're not storing it securely or we lose it as evidence for court, um, we pay the price for it. And that's my response to that. And I think at this point, to repurpose that property, I think, is probably a lot wiser than going out and renting storage space. But we haven't made a final decision. And we, yes. no, and we have not made a final decision on that. <laughs> Other PDs that are being nice enough to allow us, us the room. Till then they, some of them complain. Yep. Some of it's outside. Yeah, one of it was chained to a tree. Yeah. And eventually, if something happens, we have to pay for it. There was actually a car that was taken up one of the bays in the, at the police station Sally for a while. Yeah, yeah for, for a while. For a while. But we're also paying storage at and the new facility for some of the stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We had to rent a facility down there. Yeah, we've also got rental facilities that till we because we don't have a place to do it. Well, that rent, the renting of facilities was going on. Would Jim Way Beacon before. was here. He yeah. had he had mm -hmm. storage lockers that the police were renting to put some of the things in. That's all I had. Jan, do you have anything? Great. I am good. <laughs> I just want to say uh, voting is tomorrow. Please get out and vote. I know it's supposed to be a nor'easter, um, just like last year. I don't know what the, I don't know what the date is. Um, you know why we have to get these northeasters. Well, no, I don't know. Why, why, I know what the I know what the date number is, but I don't oh, know what, oh. what it is with that date, voting date, that it has to be a nor'easter and <laughs> snow yeah. the Dickens. Um, but um, you know, depending on how things go, um, I want to uh, thank the town aware for my service on this board. Um, I want to thank the rest of the board members. Um, it's been a pleasure working with you folks. Um, it's also been a pleasure working with the past board members. Um, that we had here and uh, again I hope to continue to serve the town um, but uh, we'll see how tomorrow goes. The other thing I got to say is in the words of the Honorable Bill Thompson of Chicago is remember to go out and vote and vote often. <laughs> <laughs> okay so we're all set then move to adjourn. Second. We already did. <laughs> Hi. Why did you have Hi. something to say? Yeah, I did. Oh, I thought we did that. Before. We did that. We did that before. Uh, oh, oh, okay. 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 Right. We're stalled. Come on out. down. I am really s sad to think that somebody would write that. I know everybody has their opinion, but I feel that we're at Washington, D.C., and all five of you people are Trump. I feel what you just oh, read. Please. Not me. I <laughs> just, I feel that that else. was all hearsay, second heard. Nobody, where was everybody when this garage was being built? How many times when it got passed did we have meetings on this garage? Now it's built and you're going to come in here and tell us what we should have done? Damn, let the hoss out before you shut the gate, would you? The gate is shut. I'm really disappointed. I've lived here all my life. And how these town people have treated this board, every one of you. You stand out there, you vote, you try to do the best you can. I've been there. This five of you, not one, that can make a decision on this board. And I feel that they're only targeting the chairman. This is my opinion, and I think it's wrong. He's only the messenger. There's five of you that vote on our budgets and what happens in this town. And I want to be proud of this town, and I'm not right now. You get people on the finance committee shooting their mouth off, not knowing what they're saying. I'm really disappointed for being here in this town of where? New Hampshire. Because I think I've been on that side of that chair. I might have an opinion, but there's four others that make that decision to make that article pass. And I think Tom Clough 
the time he's put into this town has done a great job. I've known him for many years and I worked for him when he owned the store. And I couldn't ask for a better boss. I'm really sorry that we have young ch kids like that that are coming up to a level, coming into the next generation that can write something like that. And I do understand he has an opinion. But get your back straight. Thanks, Thank you. Just uh, a little follow up because we've heard this word transparency tossed around and tossed around and tossed around. Over 12 years, I've worked with so many different people on the board. And I've never known anybody who wanted anything short of transparency. We've had different opinions, we've voted differently, mm -hmm. but nobody ever has wanted anything other than to be upfront with voters, uh, to people, and to be transparent in what we're doing. Nobody, nobody in 12 years, uh, whether we agree with each other or not, that was that was the standard that this board has always run. I don't mean to say that politicking, I'm just saying that because that's the way it is. So I'll tell it to anybody. And, I think if you go back and talk to any of the board members over the years, they'll tell you the same thing. That it, it isn't, uh, not that we don't make mistakes, not that we don't make bad decisions sometimes. But you shouldn't be beat up but, by it. You should it, learn by your mistakes and fix it. But it's always a matter of, uh, you know, we are open. You know? You're human! Um, <laughs> okay, enough said. <laughs> Okay. Well, I don't know. I, I just, I, you know, I I think that all of a sudden, I'm sorry if, if I'm talking Jack after you've already well, tried sorry. to close the meeting, but, <laughs> but it, it really kind of, I don't know, what the heck, why are we here? I mean, now we, we have to have job descriptions to pass out, we have to pass out everything. I mean, it just is, the job of the selectman is to run the town. And it's becoming, uh, being micromanaged. And it just doesn't seem to make sense to me. I mean, I don't know how the rest of you feel yeah, about that. I mean, want, They don't want you to micromanage them. Uh, well, that's, yeah, the, well, the <laughs> department heads. I mean, the department heads have more liberty than we do here right now. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sort of I'm, I'm worried that if we continue to get into the mm -hmm. political... I know. Yeah, I think it's... I'm done. That's, uh, <laughs> I'm going home. Correct. <laughs> Um, Good. So Who moved to adjourn? Right. Moved to adjourn. Second. Oh. Aye. Aye.